Hello and welcome to another episode of Nerd Paints. So for this episode, we're gonna paint the Frost Giant from the game Blood Rage. So for the most part, I've always used Citadel paints with a few exceptions here and there. I've used a few Army Painter paints here and there, not very many, but I ended up buying one of the complete sets of Army Painter. And I really wanted to try that primarily on one model and see how it turned out. So that's what we're gonna do on this one. I'm gonna use, for the most part, Army Painter. You can still use Citadel if you want, just some similar shades. And because it is the first time that I've really used Army Painter primarily, if I run into any steps that aren't working out, then I'll forewarn you. So with that said though, let's go ahead and begin. What I want to do first though, is I want to remove him off of his base. This part isn't completely necessary. In fact, underneath here, the stone part, it's a little bit of a thicker part, so it might take a little bit for me to remove him off of there. But I want to further accentuate and make it look like he's really standing over the edge of a cliff. So that's why I want to take him off. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove him off. And as you can see here, it did take a little bit of time. In fact, I accidentally cut a little bit too deep into the base where I accidentally cut a hole into the base. So no problem, I'm gonna fix that. I'm gonna use some green stuff to fill that in. And I'm gonna actually fill in the entire bottom of the base with green stuff. So I'm gonna take Army Painter. It's one of their modeling tools, it's this blue and yellow, almost looks like a putty. I'm gonna cut off the end here and mix the two together. So when you mix the blue and the yellow together, then it creates this green modeling mold where it, when it dries, it'll completely harden. So, but I'm gonna work this in on the bottom part of the base, the underside, and completely fill that in, but make sure it doesn't go beyond the edge of the base here as far as um, the depth but that'll fill in completely. And then I, as you can tell here, I'm, I apologize, but I did add some to the top of the base as well to further fill that in. And then I also took some slate chippings from Decor Plus and took a few different rocks here, just laying them out how I want this to be. And then after I get it a look that I want, I'm gonna take some super glue and then I'm gonna super glue some of these rocks into place. So I'm just going one at a time just so I don't get it completely mixed up. And I might take a little bit of green stuff just to add a little bit more on the base here underneath these rocks, underneath the next one. So I want a rock sitting kind of on top. So put some green stuff down and then put a rock on top of that and then just kind of push that in. That should hold together pretty well once that dries and once that green stuff hardens. And as I'm going, I'm just laying him out just to see how I want this to be. And I'm going to take a drill and just very slowly drill a hole up through his ankle. You don't want to go too deep because I don't want it to come out the other end. And then with a paper clip, I'm going to put that through just to see how far it's going in. That should be plenty. That's going up right up through his ankle. But again, without coming out the other end, you really want to watch that. Make sure it doesn't come out through the model. Do the same thing with the rock. I'm gonna put a little piece of paper clip up into his leg, into his foot, as well as into the rock here. And that will in turn go down into the green stuff. That'll help anchor him in place. Again, same thing, just using my thumb, just make just see how deep it's going in there. As you can see, I'm just very slowly drilling into that rock. And the diameter is just barely bigger or just about the same size as the paper clip. Once I have that in there, then I'm gonna take some super glue and just dab a little bit where those holes are. And I'm also gonna take a little bit of green stuff. And then with a toothpick, just I'm gonna push some green stuff into that hole. With that, I'm gonna go ahead and shove the piece of paper clip into that hole, and that should hold in pretty well, especially by adding a little bit of green stuff in there. That'll help anchor it in. Might even take a little bit of green stuff just to put around the base of that paper clip. And this part might not be completely necessary, but I just wanna make sure that anchors in pretty well. 
and then do the same thing with the hole that we drilled into his foot. So it's not completely dry yet. I still haven't let it completely dry, but it should be in there pretty well. I'm gonna take some needle nose pliers just to clip off a little bit more of the paper clip here on the end here so it's not as long. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and build up the base a little bit more, adding a little more green stuff on top of these rocks. I wanna add some green stuff to where these, the paper clips are gonna go into. So I need to add some green stuff onto these rocks. And then I'll take the frost giant Add a little bit of super glue on the base of his foot as well as the rock. Just help further seal that in. And now I'm just going to shove it through so the ends of the paper clips are going into the green stuff that I just added and just shoving that down into the green stuff and onto the rocks. Now once I have the frost giant anchored in, I'm going to take my toothpick Again, I haven't let the green stuff dry yet, so I'm just going around. I'm going to add some indents into the green stuff to make it look like it's part of the rock and part of the cliff. So I broke off the end of my toothpick just to give a sharper edge. and just going to press that in and create some different edges. Alright, and after that, you want to let it dry. I'd probably give it a good 24 hours, but at least a few hours for the green stuff to completely dry. But I'm going to give it a good 24 hours before I move on to the next step. And then once it is completely dry, then I'm gonna prime them with a black primer. And for my first paint, I'm gonna take Stone Golem by Army Painter. And I'm just gonna put a little bit into this tub here. Okay, so now this is gonna be one of the parts that you might be able to skip over. And the reason why is I'm using, I'm used to using Citadel paints for the base layer. And so usually what I do is I'll dry brush a grayish color on here just bring out some of the highlights and then brush with a thin layer of citadel's base paints over that so that'll still keep the the dark shadowed areas while bringing out some of the highlighted areas from what i'm dry brushing here if you're using citadel paints then go ahead and do this if you're using army painter then feel free to skip over this part the reason why is because i've found coming up here next that Army Painter paints go on really thinly. So I ended up, I'm gonna end up putting on multiple coats over this anyway. So it's gonna completely cover it with the next, the next paint that I'm gonna be using. So completely up to you. If you wanna follow along, then go and dry brush this over. Again, this will help bring out some of the highlights while keeping the shaded areas dark. If you're using Citadel, then you can also use Ultian Gray to dry brush over this, which is what I usually do when I'm using Citadel paints. Okay, so now for the next step, and this is the part that I was talking about, I'm gonna use Cobalt Skin by Army Painter. I'm gonna add some of this to my wet palette. And my original thought was to treat it just like a Citadel base paint and just go over with a thin layer. But you'll notice here that it doesn't go on too well when I apply this over the, the areas I dry brushed over the gray and the black. So what I'm going to end up doing is just go over this with a few layers just to get a nice solid color. So as you can see here, this is one of my first layers and it just looks kind of like a mess. So I'm going to end up going over it with a few layers. One thing that I should forewarn, if you haven't used these paints before, you really need to give them a really good shake. What I ended up doing was buying Army Painter mixing balls and they're supposedly rust proof stainless steel that you'd place one of those into the Army Painter paint bottles, the dropper bottles and that helps agitate and mix the paint really well. But you're gonna to wanna to at least shake these bottles up really well before you use them. So this is after my third layer of applying this. And I'm just going through and making sure everything is just completely covered, minus the hair and the rocks, mainly just the skin. And then his face, I left with just one layer. So I'm gonna go over that with some other shades. But for all of his other skin, I'm going over it with Probably a good three layers. Okay, and then once that's done, for my next step, I'm gonna take Necromancer Cloak by Army Painter. I'm gonna add this to my wet palette. And these paints, I'm not really adding that much water aside from what my, palette, what my wet palette already offers because these paints are fairly thin as it is. So I'm gonna take my brush and I'm gonna go over all of his hair with the Necromancer Cloak. And for this, you could probably get away with one or two layers.
Make sure you get all the hair that's coming out from underneath his armpits, on his arms, going from his head all the way down below his belly, and then on his forearms as well. His forearms are kind of hard to tell where his hair begins on his wrist. So just take a good guess and then add a little patches, make it look natural. And then once you're done with that, then for the next step, I'm going to take Castle Gray by Army Painter. And I'm also going to take Griffin Blue by Army Painter and add that to my wet palette. I'm going to create a few different shades here. So I'm going to take Stone Golem again, and I'm going to add this to my wet palette as well. And I'm also going to take Mummy Robes for a brighter color for the more highlighted areas. And then matte black. Okay, I'm gonna take matte black with a little bit of the castle gray. Create kind of a dark grayish shade. I'm gonna clean off my brush and then I'm gonna take a little bit of the Stone Golem with a little bit of the skin color and create a shade with that as well. And I'll take that grayish color that we created and then with a little bit of blue and add that in there. Just mixing in a few different paints here just to create a nice cool grayish skin color for him. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start going over a lot of his skin with this, with the grayish color first. This I'm only going over with one layer for the most part. I'm just going to go through and add in a few highlights as well with the brighter color. Maybe a little bit over his face, his eyebrows, his nose. And then go back to the original grayish blue and go over his arms and his legs. And this, over that original cobalt skin, is creating a nice shade that I wanted to go for. If it looks like you have a little bit of patches here and there, then don't worry about it, because we're gonna add, we're gonna keep building up the different shades. So it should blend in pretty well. I'm gonna go to a brighter shade and start building up some of those highlights. I'm going to start adding highlights beginning with his belly. So I've noticed with Army Painter that they actually do blend in really well when you're using a second brush. I'm just going around right now taking a brighter shade and just adding some highlights over it. It'll be over his belly, the tops of his legs, his on his back here. Mainly all of his highlighted areas you can go over with this brighter shade. And then with a second brush, you can help blend that in. So at this point, I'm mainly working between the darker gray and this brighter grayish tone to add highlights and then add some of the darker areas back in and then blending the two together. And for the brighter areas, I'm gonna go almost completely mummy robes to go over the more, the more brighter areas. But this gives us a nice cool grayish bluish shade as you can see. Now I'm gonna take Army Painter's blue tone, one of their washes, I'm gonna add this in a little tub here. And then I'm also gonna take dark tone and add that in. Almost a, an equal amount, maybe just a little bit more of the blue and mix this together. Now I'm not gonna go over all of them, I'm just going through the, the darker recessed areas with this. So don't paint over all of the frost giant with this, just get it into some of the recessed areas and then with a second brush, just kind of blend that in. And then on his belly here, I want to get it into these creases here. So I'll take 
I'll paint that in and then maybe with the second brush just blend that in a little bit. And this also kind of helps give it a blue cold shade on his belly. Mainly going into some of the shadowed areas, into his toes, getting into some of the creases. And if you need to, take your second brush to help soak up any excess that you may have gotten or blend that in. I'm gonna add a little bit into his face as well, get this into some of the creases. Really avoiding the highlighted areas. If you happen to get any in the highlighted areas, then you can blend it in a little bit or just kind of wipe some of it off. All right, and then I'm gonna go back and then just retouch up some of the highlighted areas with mummy robes. I'm just working with the different shades here, reapplying some of the darker tones, some of the mid tones, while blending in with a second brush if needed. On his belly here, around these different designs, I'm gonna take my robes and reapply some of the highlights. Just going around the edges. And then for his lats here, I'm also going to add some of that highlighted paint into here. I might add in some of that cobalt skin as well. I want to add a little bit of skin tone into him. So I'm going to add some into his chest. Maybe a little bit on his arms as well. But I'm going to start with his chest. Now for his lats, it's not really defined, so I'm going to take a, a smaller brush and just paint that in and paint in where the lats would be. I'm just drawing those in. And then just skip to a, a mid-tone just to add a little bit of shadow into there as well. I'm going to take a little bit of that blue. So I probably applied a little too much blue to my wet palette, but that's okay. I'm going to apply some of that blue with a little bit of that gray and just blend that into his chest, into where the skin tone was that we added. Just jumping around between these different shades, adding a little bit of skin tone here and there while blending that in. All right, I think this is looking pretty good so far. So I'm gonna let that dry, and then for the next step, I'm gonna go ahead and take werewolf fur, and I'm gonna move on to his hair. I'm gonna add this to my wet palette, and then also some wolf gray. Also some gorgon hide. I'm going to use this tone to go over all of his hair. I'm 
I'm gonna add in a little bit of blue into the werewolf fur with just a little bit of the Gorgon hide. I wanna create a brownish grayish color to help highlight his hair with this. I'm gonna start with the top of his head and then with a second brush or wipe that one off, I'm gonna blend that in. Just pull it down along the streaks of his hair. I'm gonna use that same tone to go around and highlight here and there on his hair, just to highlight a few of the strands here and there. I wanna especially get some of the tips of his hair down here. I wanna give it kind of a frost look on the tips of his hair underneath his arms. Okay, and then again with my second brush, I'm gonna blend this in a little bit on his, on his forearm. I think this is looking pretty good so far. All right, now for the next step, I'm gonna go ahead and take Retributor Armor and add some of this to my wet palette. And then I'm also gonna take Liberator Gold. I'm gonna end up using that for the highlights. So that Citadel tub that I had, it, it wasn't mixed very well, so I had to re reshake it and stir it a little bit and then re-add some to my wet palette. So you can ignore this, this shade here on the bottom. But with Retributor Armor, I'm gonna go over the gold bands around his arms. Okay, so next I wanna add a shade to those. So I'm gonna again take Dark Tone. Just add a little bit into this tub here. And then again, a little bit of blue tone. The last one that I had kind of dried up by now. So I'm gonna add a little bit of blue tone. And this is about a two to one, two black to one of the blue. I'm gonna take that and go over the gold bands with this. I think what I'll do, I'm gonna take the same shade actually and go over his hair. Okay, I'm gonna let that completely dry, and then I'm gonna take Dungeon Gray and add this to my wet palette. As well as Dark Stone. And I'm also gonna take Dark Sky by Army Painter and add this to my wet palette as well. And for the next step, I'm gonna go over this, the rocks. I'm gonna start by mixing Dungeon Gray with dark stone. Maybe add a little bit of black into there as well. And then just a little bit of blue. I wanna add a few different shades here and I don't want it to be one solid color around the rocks. It's gonna have different shades here and there. So I'm gonna jump between maybe the gray, the brown, Add some of that here and there, maybe some of the dark grayish blue, and just go over the, the stone to begin with on, that he's holding, and then also my next step will be the, the rocks on the base. But the top part might be a little bit brighter, maybe a little bit darker, bluish gray underneath. Just jump in between these different shades. I'll take a little bit more of the brown with the, a little bit of the blue and come underneath here on the bottom part of the stone. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the rocks here on the base. I'm just gonna go over all of the stones with the bluish brown kind of dark grayish color. I'm gonna take some of the mummy robes and mix that in as well. I'm gonna take a brighter shade and go over the top part of the stone.
Now for the next step, I'm gonna let all that dry. So I'm gonna jump back to the gold bands since that's completely dry by now. And then I'm gonna add some highlights. I'm gonna take Liberator Gold to add some of the highlights to the bands, the gold bands. Okay, now I'm gonna take Mummy Robes and just a little bit on the tip of a small brush. I'm gonna highlight his teeth, just the tips of his teeth to help bring those out. And I might even use this to add a little bit of highlights in the folds of his forehead, as well as the edges of his eyebrows. And then for the eyes, if you wanna add a little dot into his eyes, you can. I'm actually gonna keep those dark and shaded in his eyes. Just gonna go around and add a few highlights here and there with this. Maybe further define his side muscles here, his lats. Okay, and then I'm gonna take a darker grayish brown and paint his toenails with this. And then maybe also his fingernails. All right, I think this is looking pretty good so far. So now I'm gonna take blue tone and I'm gonna add some shade into the rocks. And I'm also gonna take purple tone and I'm not mixing these all together. I'm actually gonna put them kind of side by side and then also some dark tone. So as you can see, I know it's kind of hard to see, but I didn't mix them together. I'm keeping them separate and I'm gonna add in different shades here and there into the stones. So the blue, wherever I want it to be, kind of an icy, cold look, I'll add some of that on here. I'm gonna end up going over a lot of this with, with snow, but I'm gonna start shading in some of the rocks here with this. I'm jumping around between different shades. So on the bottom here, I might add some black underneath the rocks. And then some of the more shaded areas, I'll add some black. And the purple, I'm not adding very much purple, just a little bit here and there, just to give it a little variety. And I start running out of the black, so I'm gonna add some more in here and just further shade the stone that he's holding the same way. Add a little bit of blue here and there on the top, a little bit of some of the black shade into some of the recesses. Just adding a few different tones here and there just to give it some variety. While still giving it that icy cold look. Okay, I'm gonna clean off my brush and I'm gonna let that completely dry and then I'm gonna take Gorgon Hide. And for this, I'm gonna use a dry brush. So I'm gonna add some of this into my tub here. And again, for this, you wanna make sure it's completely dry. Work in some of the paint into your dry brush, but get a lot of the excess off and start dry brushing and highlighting some of the edges of the stones. I'm just going around randomly and bringing out some of the edges, giving it kind of an, a cold, icy, snowy look. As you notice, I'm just staying for the most part on the tops of the of the stone as well as the the rocks that on the base. I'm not going underneath in the bottom part. If you do, just go over a little bit. I'm also going to dry brush a little bit on the tips of his hair. So maybe underneath his arms, just the, the ends of his hair going down his chest and the hair that's hanging down here underneath his legs, under his armpits. I'm 
I'm also gonna go over his skin with a little bit of this. I don't have very much on my brush at this point. It's helping blend in some of the different tones while giving him a nice frost look to him. So at this point, I barely have any on my brush. So again, you wanna make sure you get a lot of that out. All right, now for the next step, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna work on the base a little bit more. So I'm gonna take Army Painter Battlefields. This is their snowy winter tuft. I'm gonna take some super glue and then add some of this here and there onto his base. I'm gonna have some of that coming out of the different creases and edges of the stones. Just adding some here and there. And then I'm taking my plastic tool here to help shove that into the creases to help glue that in and get that pressed in there firmly. And you can use a toothpick or the back end of your, your brush as well. Just want something to help push that in. And then next I'm gonna take Valhalla and Blizzard. This is gonna be one of the Citadel textures I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna use Valhalla and Blizzard to add some of the snow onto, this, onto the rocks here. So with my plastic tool, I'm gonna to clump that in and just spread it out. So the thinner it is, it'll give it kind of a more wet look. The thicker that you apply it, it'll give it a kind of a fluffy snow look. I'm gonna take a little bit and add it to the tips of the tuft here as well. As I'm adding it in, I'm thinning it out as it gets towards the edge of the rocks here. And then same thing with the stone that he's holding. I'm gonna add some of that on here as well. Okay, I think it looks, looks pretty cool so far. So just go around and keep adding a little bit of snow here and there, however you want, it's totally up to you. Use as much as you want or as little as you want. I'm not applying too much, but I do want it to give it a nice snowy look. So I've, I'm adding on a fair amount. Next I'm gonna take matte black. I'm gonna to touch up the base with matte black. So now for my next step, my thought was to keep this part right here black so it looks like he's looking over a cliff, but I think I'm actually gonna fill that in. It looks a little bit empty to me. I'm gonna take Sterling Battlemire by Citadel and I'm gonna add some of this in there. I wanna keep it, I don't wanna take away from it looking like a, a cliff, So, but I, do, I don't want it to be completely empty either. So I'm gonna add a little bit of this in here to give it a muddy look underneath this overhang. This is gonna be another step where you're gonna to need to, to completely dry though, unfortunately. But I got to this point and thought, I kinda of wanna fill this, this in, where originally I thought I would leave it completely empty, like he's looking over a cliff. I'm gonna take my plastic tool and just start working this around, adding in some edges, ridges in here and there, maybe pull out some of the excess. So it still indents in underneath here, but give it a nice rough, muddy, kind of a rocky look. Okay, I'm gonna let that completely dry. At least four or five hours, maybe even up to 24 hours if you wanna make sure that it's completely dry. But once it's completely dry, then I'm gonna take some of these shades that we created and I'm gonna start going over that. Using my brush almost like a dry brush to fill this and I'm not going over it completely where it fills in. I still want it to have kind of a muddy look. And then my next step, I'm gonna take that blue tone wash and then apply some of this in there.
Okay, and then dark tone. Do the same thing, add some of this into my tub here and then apply some of that in there. I didn't mix that in with the blue tone, I'm sorry. I know you can't see that tub very well. This is just straight black tone that I'm adding in there. and then go back to some Gorgon Hide. You wanna make sure that that tone is completely dry, by the way, before you do this. Almost retracing some of my steps that I took before. And I'm gonna take my dry brush, just as before, and then I'm gonna dry brush along the this muddy cliff that we created. Just to give it a little bit of a frost look over this over the mud. Okay, and then next I'm gonna take that Valhalla and Blizzard and then add a little bit of this in here as well. And then with my plastic tool, I'm gonna to thin that out. I don't want it to be too thick underneath here. So I'm gonna thin it out a little bit while at the same time removing some of the excess. All right, I think this looks pretty good. I'm just taking my dry brush just to get out some of the, a little bit more of the excess here of the Valhalla and Blizzard. I don't want it to cake on the on the edge of the base. And then I'm gonna reapply black around the base here just to retouch this up. I think that will do it though. I really like how this turned out. I know it's not completely necessary to remove them from the base, but I think by adding additional rocks and raising them up slightly higher, I think it really helps make it look like he's standing over the edge of a cliff. This was also my first miniature where I primarily used army painter paints. I would say for some of my future videos, I might start incorporating army painter quite a bit. I actually really like how well they blend. But if you want to, go ahead and leave any comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts if there are any certain paints that you'd prefer. Also, if you haven't already, be sure to click subscribe. And you can also head over to my Patreon page if you'd like to support further videos. But with that though, as always, thank you for watching and painting with Nerd Paints.